Hmm, curiouser and curiouser. Hello and welcome to my The Expanse Season 1, Episode 6 Rock Bottom Review. So this episode begins with Avasarala in an aquarium and she's bribing a guy called Carlos uh, with putting in a good word for his son in his parole hearing. And in exchange for that, she wants access to his spy that's on Tycho. So now we're on Tycho and Holden and Burton are exiting the airlock where Johnson is waiting for them and he knows Holden's name or he knows his face probably because he's on the posters of the remember the can't protesters so Johnson wants to get rid of the Tachi because they uh, get a lot of Martian traffic through that station and if they see that Martian ship that they know is associated with the Donja the They'll want to know what it's doing there. But I think that maybe he just wants an excuse for them to get off the ship so he can take it somewhere. And Johnson seems to be very good at bluffing because Holden and Burton try to convince him that there's like a platoon of Marines on the Tachi. And he basically says that that thing only holds 30 people. And if you had more people with you, you would bring them out right away as a show of force which you haven't so i'm going to assume that you don't have 30 people or more in there so johnson tells holden that if he wanted to hurt them he could have already done it by now he would have just told people that that the tachi was here with the crew of the canterbury so it feels like maybe johnson is using these people as a bargaining tool so at the end of the last episode miller got a sack put on his head and he got zapped in the kidneys and now he's waking up with uh, two people standing over him. Uh, their names are Lida and Kaipo, and they are Anderson Dawes' goons. So Dawes had to let Kathari, the guy that stuck the bolt through Havelock's chest, he had to let him go because it seemed that Miller didn't want anything to do with him. And if Miller wasn't going to mess this guy up, then Dawes is just like, well, you can go. So due to this, Dawes is like, we're going to talk now, which basically means he's going to mess him up. So then we go to a new area, which is an abandoned asteroid mine in the Martian trade zone. And there's two guys there, one guy called Diego and the other called Uncle Mateo. And Diego is basically setting charges on this asteroid so they can blow it up. And for some reason, his uncle has like this wire hanging down across his face. I thought it was a crack in his helmet at first, but he like opens his helmet and then grabs this wire and like flicks it away. And I don't know what the deal is with that. I'm assuming that it's showing that he has like really cheap, poor quality equipment. So then Johnson says that he wants Holden to testify to the UN about what happened to the Canterbury and with the Donja. And Holden says that you only want us to do that because you're the OPA and if you have us testify, then you'll also get a seat at the table. Kind of legitimizing the OPA in a way. So Holden's like, mm, nah, not going to do it. We're leaving. And Johnson says, uh, you can't leave because I have control of your ship. So Nagata says something about tell Johnson that if he does anything wrong, we're going to vent his station. So I, sh I assume that she means that they're going to release all the oxygen out of the station. And there's a guy spacewalking outside of the Tachi and he gets the minigun turned on him. So he's like, uh, Johnson, uh, we have a problem here. So there's a bit of a truce. So we're back with Miller and Dawes and Dawes starts rifling through Miller's clothing. He's looking through his boot and he starts looking through his hat and Miller's like, uh-oh, if he finds that data vault that's in that band of that hat, I'm in trouble. So he starts like riling him up and Dawes falls for it. He just throws his hat back at him. So the Qinglong is the ship that uh, Diego and Uncle Mateo are in and they get pulled over by the space cops. The Martians are like, uh, 
you need to power down your ship immediately. So I don't know if they were like doing some illegal mining or something. So back on Tycho and Johnson tells Holden that the OPA sent the Scopuli on a recon mission and it was destroyed. So he's going to need the Tarchi to go and retrieve a guy called Lionel Polanski, which is apparently a code name. Um, and he'll apparently have information about what's been happening out there and what's been happening with all these ships blowing up. So Johnson says that he needs a Tarchi because it's actually an armed ship. He needs weapons because there's a lot of heat out there. And Holden says he wants to go, but Johnson's like, no way, man, you're too valuable. Like, if I don't have you to give testimony about what happened with the Doninger and the Kant, then I'm going to lose out big time here. But Holden says that all the crew aboard the Tarchi all saw the same stuff. So if he disappears, then the others can still testify. But Johnson doesn't like that because he knows that Holden is now the face of the disaster of the Canterbury blowing up. So we go back to the Ching Long and the space cops are roughing up Diego and Uncle Mateo. And apparently they haven't paid their spaceship registration. So they're like, you're coming back with us and you won't be going anywhere until you've paid off your debt. And on the way out, one of the cops grabs a bottle of water. And Uncle Mateo's like, nah, that's it. I've had enough. And he tries to rough him up a bit. And the cops make him back off and they say to him, well, listen, like... You're screwed now because we're not going to do any favors for you. You're going to have to go all the way around Martian space. And Uncle Mateo's like, uh, we don't have enough fuel left to get back all that way. And the cops are like, well, too bad. You should have thought of that before you started being a tough guy. So Holden explains to the crew of the Tarchi that he's going out with Johnson's crew. And they think that as soon as they get out into open space, that they're just going to throw him out of the airlock. So they're like, why are you doing this? Why are you wanting to go with them? And Holden says that he feels guilty. And they're like, what, what, what do you feel guilty for? And he says, well, he's the one who logged the Scopulized distress call. He's the one that got him into all this. So Burton looks like he's about to absolutely snap. And then uh, Nagata basically says to him, Burton, calm down, calm down. Burton's like, nah, nah. And Nagata says, well, I hate to break it to you, but I also knew about that. And Burton's like, well, why didn't you tell me? And then he realizes that Nagata's actually afraid of him. She thinks he's a bit of a psycho. So Dawes says to Miller that Julie Mao came to him like he's not responsible for what happened to her. And he gives this speech about how everyone's made sacrifices and he explains how his sister was weak. She had weak bones and they basically had to kill her because she was just holding them back. It sounds really mean, but when you're desperate, I guess you got to do what you got to do. And then we go back to the Ching Long and... Uh, for some reason, Uncle Mateo throws Diego out of the airlock. I don't know why. And then we find out that the OPA killed Avasarala's son. Or one of her sons. I don't know. Does she have multiple? I don't know. So back on Tycho Station and Kamal and Burton are having a drink at the bar. And they're talking about their lives. And uh, Kamal says that the... Martian Navy never gave him the chance to fly the big ships with the big boys and that flying the Tarchi was the best feeling he's ever had. So that kind of made me think that uh, he's going to want to go with Holden on this mission to retrieve the last sole survivor of the Scopuli. So Johnson's crew is working on the Tarchi or should I say the Roshanante and they're disguising it to look like a gas tanker. Uh, so they're going to fly casual but not too casual. So Holden asks Johnson if he could take care of Lopez's body. And he says he wants him to have like a proper burial on Mars. So Johnson agrees to send Lopez's body back to Mars as they're also fellow soldiers. So Dawes's henchmen are about to throw Miller out of the airlock and then their heads basically explode. And it turns out that Musk just shot them in the head and killed them and saved Miller from being tossed into space. I don't know how she knew he was there. Did she have a tracking device or something? No idea. And then back on the Ching Long, and Uncle Mateo is a madman. He 
kamikazes his ship into the space cops ship and blows them up now i'm not sure if i heard him say opa because he was talking about a man's gonna stand up a man's gonna stand up and then he's like opa opa a man's gonna stand up so i'm not sure if he was opa or not and then back on Tycho Station, and Holden and Nagata are toasting the dead. They're toasting Shed. They're host toasting the soldiers on the Doninger. And Nagata kind of gets a bit quiet, and she's like, uh, I don't know if I want to toast the soldiers, because they're wearing a uniform, and uniforms kind of make men do stupid things and get themselves killed. Meanwhile, Johnson's opening Lopez's body bag, and he presses a button on the chest of his armor and a little hole opens up and he pulls this little chip out about yay big and i'm wondering if that's like a dog tag or something personal identification and then back in the bar some dude is like eyeing off nagata and holden and he's got like a bionic eye and it's like zooming in on him and it zooms in on Holden's face and it says something about transmitting to someone else. So I'm wondering if that was the spy that Avasarala was requesting usage of back at the start of the episode. So back on series and Miller and Mus are discussing the first time they killed someone. She's not handling it very well and she needs a bit of comforting. So Miller gives her a bit of a hug and a drink and she goes in for a bit of a smooch and he's like, mm, no. So then Miller goes and gets his hat and he checks it to see if Dawes got his data vault out of the uh, hat band. And he hasn't. So then he looks through Julie's data. So it turns out that Nagata and Kamal are both on the Tarchi or the Roshanante. And they say that they've both given statements in advance so that they can be allowed to go on this mission. So if they get killed, they've already got the statement. And Nagata says to Johnson that... Uh, at some point in the future, she'll be coming to him with a name and she'll want him to use his resources to find out whatever he can about that person. So I don't know who she's going to find information on. I can't even think of who she's related to besides Burton. Maybe some old OPA person if she really is an OPA agent. So then back on series and Miller shows the captain of Star Helix the data that was on that data vault that uh, Julie Mao had. And it was like a scientist or a researcher on Phoebe. They were doing some research and they found something that was like off the charts, like just phenomenal. So they were like, you need to send this out straight away. So Miller wants to know if it's like some sort of a bioweapon or something like that. And he reckons that the OPA found out about it through Julie Mao getting it off that data broker. And then the OPA sent the Scopuli out to intercept a ship and they wanted to get some of whatever it was that they were developing out there. But then someone else, a third party, was blowing up ships to get what they had and to cover up the fact that they were there. So Miller's like, who is it? It's someone who doesn't care if they start a war between Earth and Mars and the belt. So it has to be someone big. But then the captain just says, uh, are there any copies of this? And Miller says, no, it's encrypted. You can't copy it. So she takes it off him and she puts it in a wall safe and then says to the computer, like, delete all his files, delete all his access. And he, she says to him, you're fired. So Miller thinks that the captain was bribed by doors. So now it'll be interesting to see what Miller does because he was a Star Helix officer and now he's like a civilian. So what can he do now? And then finally we see that Burton has gotten on board the Roshanante. So the gang's all together. So one thing I'd like to mention is that while I'm watching these episodes, to make sure that I hear that the names and the places correctly, I sometimes look at the Expanse wiki. But I make sure I only look at the exact page that I'm looking for. And one of the pages said that I think it was Anderson Station is aligned to the Sol solar system, which is our solar system. The name for the sun is Sol. So I'm now thinking, like, are there people from other planets? Or is it just Earthlings who've left the solar system and then come back? I guess I won't know until later. 
So this was a bit better of an episode than the last one. The last one was 10 seconds here, 20 seconds there, 30 seconds over here. You never really got a flow. You never really got a big amount of info in one go. The special effects look really good, like that asteroid that they were towing behind the ship and all the model shots of uh, Tycho Station with the Roshanante on it. They were really good. I also love like the uniforms they have. They all look well made. They're not cheap. So I'm really looking forward to the next episode. I'm going to give this episode an 8 out of 10. I feel like maybe some of the scenes could be a little bit longer, give us a little bit more info. Like the scenes with the asteroid miners on the Ching Wong, like they could have been a bit longer. Maybe stick a few of the scenes that were separated closer together. But apart from that, it was a really good episode. So thanks for watching. If you stuck around this long, you already know that you need to like, share, comment, and subscribe. So see you next time.